Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, I'm going to talk about the summer garden has really come to, to an end, basically. There are still some plants growing, but it's time for me to really pull out my cucumber plants, summer crops, get rid of tomato plants that aren't doing well, stop trying to save them. I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing for the fall and just some ideas for next year, really. And this is one of my smaller gardens. I have three, really one that I'm, I just showed you. That is my main garden, and then I have another smaller one inside my fence line in the front of my house. So next year, I'm not going to have three separate gardens. I'm blending these into one big garden, so I'm not gonna be repeating cucumbers, squash, tomatoes, eggplant in a smaller garden than in a bigger garden. So I'm redesigning my gardens to maximize all kinds of different fruit and vegetable production. So, and if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do a lot of teaching, you know, how to grow in containers, how to grow in a smaller space. However, it's really, really hard to manage. So I'll still be able to teach and do all that. But this garden, I think, is gonna be turned into a melon patch, a pumpkin patch, cantaloupe, other kinds of melons and fruits and I'm going to use this space a little bit differently. I even have plants outside of here. That's my mushroom garden on the right which grew mushrooms but not well enough for me to really show them off. We have these weird big black beetles that came and ate everything down. So those are my overwintered peppers by the way. They never really took off like I wanted them to. I was a little late getting them into containers. I'm not going to overwinter peppers this year. Brussels sprouts that weren't covered. Anyway, this is another space that will be turned into something else. What will be staying is, this is all ginger. I've been doing a lot of videos, or did a lot of videos this year on how to start ginger inside. This is just going crazy. So come September, I'm gonna have a ton of ginger. It's doing really well. So this will stay ginger. Those will all get pulled out. I'm not sure what I'll grow in there. But I'm coming up with strategies to really maximize the diversity of different fruits and vegetables I can get out of here, but not have the same crops over and over again. And still I want to be able to teach. So I'm not, you know, I'm just not able to even give all this away. So I don't want to totally waste it, um, but I want to just figure a way to maximize it. So zucchini, they'll come off that beef for zucchini bread. I'm going to a friend's party tonight. So I'll be bringing tons of the tomatoes, zucchini, different things that you see here. But this was a good space. This was just a four by four raised bed, four by six raised bed, four by four raised bed. The green beans all grew up just as I planned. Cucumbers grew up just as I planned. You can see some great ones to be picked, like right in there. Other ones that are orange, if you have a good eye, those are being left there. I'll be collecting seeds from those. The two tomato plants on here did really well. They are loaded. That one actually rotted. These will be coming off. I'll be making a tomato salad. I'm trying to see if I have a steak in here. This is the Marglobe, and it's one tomato that I do recommend. I'm going to keep that next year. The other thing I'm doing is I'm making a list of vegetables that are staying, vegetables that are going, and vegetables that I want to try out. Like I forgot about a cherry tomato that I used to grow years ago. It's called um, Matt's Wild Cherry. And it's actually used as one of the plants for a lot of the hybrids that happen. Um, it's just a wonderful, prolific, sweet, de disease resistant tomato. And I'm gonna go and add that back to my collection. But every year I do add in some new experimental tomatoes, vegetables. The tunnel idea worked out really well. You can see all the cucumbers that were just hanging there. I just had too many cucumbers. These are the muscadines. So the ideas are working. It's just I want to really manage it better for just maintaining harvesting. Here's another angle. The two tomato plants on the right, obviously, they'll be coming out beat up. And on that note, I think I was saying, come end of July, um, I start getting a little bit burned out. But what really happened was, is my routine for spraying my tomato plants got all messed up because of various reasons, mostly vacation. And 
I just never got back on track with the burnout rolling in. I just didn't keep up on it. And you can see those plants suffered. It's not so much the sprays that you use, although I highly recommend hydrogen peroxide for tomato plants. Check out my videos on that. But whatever you pick for your sprays, stick to the routine. That's what makes a huge difference. These are all tomatoes that came up by themselves. So I will still have tomatoes come September, but it's time to just yank out everything that's beat up you know, start transitioning over to the fall garden. I mean, look at the butternut. I've been talking about those um, for the last couple of weeks. This is outside. This is where my compost is, obviously. And they are just growing everywhere. I'll be doing a spotlight on this variety. I will be growing two butternut squash up into that space right there every year. Doesn't matter on the variety, but I'll do a video on this, as I said. But the butternut squash do really well for winter storage. These butternuts will last for months if you store them the right way. And two plants, really, really prolific. I mean, look at that. That's just a waste. You know, sad to say. Um, they'll feed insects and stuff like that, but they're all getting pulled out. This was the one that came in and seeded itself. Great way to grow tomatoes. I'll be growing a tomato plant in there, but I didn't want that type of tomato. I'll be growing a red tomato, maybe baseball size. And that's just an example of just way too much production in here, which is a good thing, but I, I mean, I bag and bag and cook and um, jar some things and, you know, can't give it away quick enough. Third wave of cucumbers doing well. Other things that I'll be keeping for sure is I'll be doing that video soon. These potatoes are done. Let's just see for fun if I can find any on the surface. Tiny one, small. I forget this variety, but this is loaded with potatoes. So I'm gonna be growing these regularly. I fill it up halfway, put in a bunch of potatoes, fill it the rest of the way, put in more potatoes. We'll see how many I get out of here. This space is my no-dig garden, the pumpkin. There are two plants there, that's going crazy. I'm gonna be spraying that to keep the powdery mildew off. That's what starts rolling in about now. Cute, uh, the tomato plant's over there. Not one bit of disease on there, which is pretty cool. And I will be growing my tomatoes in different pockets throughout the garden but a lot less. And I do that, one, I have my disease spray, insect routine, all that kind of stuff. But sometimes if you put stuff in different places, you start tomatoes at different times, the diseases just seem to miss them. Um, and this way you always have plants that are producing in some capacity. Sweet potatoes, we'll definitely be growing those same exact way. In front of them are pepper plants working really well. These got completely chewed down by deer. They came back, you can see the nubs. This is where I was shooting a video on storage crops. Another butternut, beets, potatoes. 100 gallon root pouch that I do sell. Potatoes looking good. Getting overgrown, I'll take care of this this weekend. That'll take about 40 minutes. Love this variety of bean, I gotta look it up find out exactly what it is. The beans are starting to grow on there, but it's compact, disease resistant. I'm gonna be growing a lot of different beans. So this will be one variety, and this is an Asian uh, green bean. I just don't recall the name. It doesn't get as tall as a yard long. My memory, if it serves me right, if it ever does, um, these are gonna be long kind of noodle beans, but they're delicious. They're easy to, use, uh, easy, uh, to grow, real easy to use in the garden. This whole garden is not going to be a separate garden. Different things will be grown in here, successful. But again, by kind of repeating the plants and for teaching purposes, I just have too many. These are just going to waste. Those went to waste. Celery's doing well, waiting for more celery to come up. With all this heat and rain, the cucumber beetles are out of control. I'm not sure if I'll be able to save that one, but Look at all the green zucchini. This was a late planting of the dark, uh, I think it was, yeah, just dark green zucchini. It's doing well, I'm gonna trellis it up there. Tomatoes in here. 
I'm making notes on what are the most disease resistant because it looks like late blight maybe, but usually I get early blight. It looks similar the way it kills off and then the heat comes in, humidity comes in, everything dies quickly. These are my better tomato plants on the left. They're going to be staying. Cleared out that first wave of highly productive cucumbers out of there. Going to be working on um, getting all the fall crops in. You can see that the okra's all beat up. We had a ridiculous storm. Got water coming in from the side of my house. The wind was blowing so hard. 60 miles an hour. That never happened before. It's blown over a lot of things. Um, oh, look at that. I didn't even know that. So my whole trellis with metal posts, because the wind was crazy, has just blown over and blocked this space. So what does that tell me? That tells me uh, I need to make that much stronger next year. So that will get two T-posts, um, probably the T-posts that I get at Tractor Supply. They're just much stronger. And I just wanted to show you down at the base, so I guess it's a happy mistake. That's two pole bean plants, two green bean plants right there. And it filled up that entire trellis on that side. So that's pretty cool that two plants can give you all that. Right in here, these are three Asian yard long beans coming up this side. And I lied, there's a fourth green bean. So it's three green bean plants, three Asian yard long bean plants, grew all of this and I can't even keep up with eating that so you don't need a lot of plants you just have to grow them in a way that you can manage the disease and spraying peppermint oil on the undersides of my bean plants a couple of times has made a huge difference the Asian yard longs they tend to be really resistant to all the problems around here wow this wind was terrible this is I just I just came out it's like 830 okra's all blown over we're going to have to go around the other way. Love the sunflowers. More green beans. There's at least four in there. Looks like we had a sunflower snap. Took out the cucumber plant that was right there. Took out the cucumber plant that was right there. This one's doing pretty well. This is the one I'm going to work on saving and spray and probably spray weekly dust it get rid of the cucumber beetles that are around any mites and this should fill up the side of the trellis and i'll get cucumbers until the frost comes the wind really whipped through here i took out the dark green zucchini that was there gave away some of the squash yesterday but it's one two three four five six still in there this is the single vine that I planted in May. You can see right down there if you have a good eye. It's a cucumber beetle walking around. But by just dusting in there, keeping the flowers away, I was able to keep this plant alive for crazy production. That is one plant. Dusting the outsides with dust, putting my sprays down in a routine. I'm just I was just kind of waiting for this to die when I kind of got burned out um, but it's still going next year I'm just gonna do one or two squash plant one or two zucchini plant probably somewhere like this part of my plan all beat up um, all rotting on the vine tomatillos going crazy wind blew them over so I'm gonna have to strengthen my trellises that's one thing that I'm looking for or noticing right now Looking pretty good. That's the cherry tomato trellis. Trash I gotta clean up. I don't know when I'll get to that. I'm gonna keep the sweet peppers along this row here. They do really well. I stopped pruning. I was pruning the asparagus over to give more light for the pepper plants, but that's a good combo. Obviously, well maybe not obviously, but now I notice I'm gonna not put tomatillos there not put tomatoes there because I need more light to be, to be able to come in with the way this asparagus grows. Those are some watermelon plants that I um, saved. They seeded themselves. We'll see how they go. And look at the asparagus coming back. This is where I ripped out asparagus and it's fighting to come back. So I didn't really know it did that, but in theory I have some asparagus spears in August I'll be able to eat. 
all the baby asparagus that seeded itself is coming back. Anyway, my point is this is my cool weather crop garden that I just started. I have lettuce, spinach, and beets in here. They should start coming up any minute. Actually, there are some beets breaking through. One there, and then a couple right in there. Now is a great time. I did a video on that. So, uh, sponsorships. I will be doing a couple sponsorships of different products I like, but I will be keeping them from the feedback I got. Instead of breaking out the sponsorship through the video, I'll do a 30, 40 second spot, get the sponsorship over with, and then back to the videos. Peas are coming up, radishes are coming up. This is a great time to get some things growing. Looks like maybe on my peas, something's chewed the top, so I'm gonna cover that with chicken wire over there. First wave in Maryland zone seven, we get frost, a light frost, sometime mid-October. Now's a great time to get some plants into the ground. I'll be doing a video this weekend on the 15 cool weather crops, I recommend, cool weather crops I recommend to start now, and I'll show you how I'm starting them in the garden. Obviously, you just saw that, and then in seed trays and just different strategies because your garden may look like this you may be tired you haven't cleared out a space you can get those cool weather crops growing in seed starting kits which we do sell at our seed shop another wave of cucumbers i will try and spray these and save them they actually don't look too bad because down at the bottom nice and green up at the top nice and green you can see the problems coming in Insects are chewing on the underside, diseases there. But the peppermint oil spray, um, fungicides should work. Another wave of beans, just starting. So all the beans that I started early, that you saw just hanging, I'm gonna let really go so that I can harvest dried beans. And that's a great crop to store. Any kind of bean you can store, some beans better to grow as dried beans and they just have more protein more vitamins and stuff but you can do it for green beans the yard long beans just let them dry on the vines collect them and then a tip is put them into a ziploc bag and then freeze them for like a week that will kill off a lot of insects or eggs that might be on the pods not all of them but most of them and usually you don't have a problem wind just whipped through here so cherry tomatoes tons of them and I said this last year I was going to do it. I'm not going to grow eight. I'm going to grow maybe four, maybe three on one side, and I'm going to leave the other side open. So it's going to be half of a tunnel. On the other side, I'm going to look for some other vine crop that I've not grown before, not cucumbers, not beans, but something different to grow up this side. I really want to expand the, the variety of fruits and vegetables that come out of here. Sprays have helped fix the problems that were down on the bottom here, so the old stuff dies off, the new stuff looks good. If I want, I'll fix up some of these plants, but that one's gonna go, um, that one's gonna go. But just look at how all this, I think, did really well, but it's so much growth, it starts choking um, it starts choking or blocking or whatever, slowing the airflow around here. So diseases be can become more, uh, I guess diseases take hold easier, which is a fact when you have less airflow, but problems show up. They become more prevalent when you have less airflow, lots of crowding, more insects, more disease, more problems. And you have to just kind of keep that in mind. But we are at, I don't even know if it's August 15th or not, but this is really good general production overall I mean there's so much to get out of here I am making fried green tomatoes now but the whole space coming through here will be transitioned over to fall weather crops if you want to continue to follow me here's the part of the garden I'm not taking care of just letting the blueberries come back feeding them like crazy I'll clear all that out in the winter or something like that people ask me about the green stalk towers cleared them all out most of the summer crops are gone. That pepper plant reseeded itself up there, so I left it. These will all be filled with cool weather crops. Kitty pool of weeds. One of the interesting things too, is if you ever wonder, if you turn your soil, seeds have to be, let's just say, on the top inch of the soil for the sunlight and warmth to get to them, and they will germinate and you'll get weeds growing. 
when those seeds are down, you know, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches into the soil, they don't germinate. They need the right conditions. So when you turn your soil or you move compost around or you move soil around, you turn it over, seeds come up to the top. And that's why sometimes you get this, you know, barrage of weeds just popping up everywhere. It's because you turned soil or you added soil um, that had weed seeds that just weren't germinating because they were too deep in there. And now that you've scattered them across the top of your garden, they're popping up everywhere. Watermelon, the watermelon here are getting beat up. The fig tree, that is fig tree success. And it's been pruned one time already. So these beds are really not functional unless I figure out what I can grow in here that doesn't need a lot of sun. And maybe it could be more ginger or something like that. Those are the muscadines. Great growth, fig, great growth, no figs. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to keep wrapping this fig tree and it will get bigger and bigger. And eventually it's just going to be in this space, well pruned from the bottom. Hopefully it survives my winters. Blackberries need to be fixed up. But you kind of get the idea is now with your garden really growing some massive tomatoes on there. Now come middle of August with your garden really growing it's a great time to kind of walk through figure out how you want to redesign it. This is the side that I was just talking about. Asparagus doing well. The peppers kind of blocked out from the tomatoes over there, the tomatillos back there. So I have to open up the space. I can't even get in there, which is okay. I mean, it's a good problem because I have peppers growing there. I have peppers growing here. Got to figure that out. So this will be a space that I am thinking about managing early, like in May, so that come August, I can get in there. These are seeds for your asparagus plants. You can see other plants don't have them. There are male and female asparagus plants. When you have a lot of females, they send these seeds everywhere. So I'm going to get in here, cut all these out because I don't want the seeds dropping. They actually become pretty invasive and kind of a pain. That's what you saw down where the uh, cool weather crops are. Anyway, this is where the garden's at. A little beat, beat up by me not sticking with my spray routine. Um, that storm that came in last night, crazy hot weather, rainstorms, then sunshine, then humidity. Generally speaking, it's holding up pretty well. But I'm gonna redesign the garden next year. So I encourage you to start thinking about what you wanna keep crop-wise or what you wanna add crop-wise and make those changes. It's a lot of fun. And I will see you for the rest of the season. And we'll be talking more about Fall, fall weather crops, fall weather gardening. Thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.